what happens is people have dyscalculia and then they experience teachers that don't um, realize how to best accommodate that and modify the work. People don't really hate math. They hate the way that they were taught because the way they were taught wasn't connecting to their learning style. There was a lot of moments um, in my education of just like feeling like I was singular. Like I was the only one experiencing this overwhelming feeling of not understanding what was going on. And I would look around and people had their pencils and pens out hard at work. And I was like stuck on number one and there was like 20 questions to complete. The main Finding is sort of that kids with dyscalculia find it really difficult to estimate, to compare quantities, to perform rudimentary uh, sums. And when it comes to mental arithmetic, especially to eventually be able to retrieve them from long term memory. So, you know, when you ask somebody what's two plus three, most adults won't have to do anything that pops into their head, five. So that's not true for kids with dyscalculia. There seems to be a real barrier into getting those math facts into their long-term memory and instead they persist in using, you know, finger counting and other types of sort of more laborious and error-prone strategies to solve problems. Even something as simple like these little dots, they both are four, quantities of four, but they looked so different to me and I literally did not know that this was, I guess, the same just like looking a little bit different until again, I was kind of like 14 years old. I would see students and I would see they would, sometimes they would have this desire to want to learn the math, but then there would be certain struggles and they'll say they're looking at it and it's just not making any sense to them. And the hallmark really is then when it comes to calculation, that's why it's called dyscalculia um, with the calculation part, because these kids just find it really difficult to learn their math back. So I think that's, that's in grades one, two, and three, you should be able to see that already. One of the biggest things I would say is repetition is key. Sometimes when a student has this calculia, they're not necessarily ignoring you. They are just not quite understanding. And sometimes you need to say those uh, multiple times. And when you do that, you want to have some proximity to that student as well. If you know that's a student that struggles, when you're given those directions, you want to stand next to that person and you want to repeat it. One of them is, you know, to use explicit instruction. So to really break things down into multiple steps. To use tools such as number lines can be quite effective. Look for real world connections whenever possible and connect a problem. If it's an algebraic problem, look for a real world connection that you can align that problem to. Please limit copying tasks. It's very hard for a student who has a learning disability or even maybe who doesn't to look up at the whiteboard and back down in the paper, up at the whiteboard, back down in the paper. So one of the biggest things is going to be presenting a problem in multiple ways. Um, for example, um, three plus five, I would have, you want to do an image with three apples and five apples. You'll want to put it in words, writing out T-H-R-E-E -E plus, and you know, writing out all the things. And then also just talking about a situation where a student might have three of something and five of something and needing to bring those together. So essentially looking at a problem from a multitude of perspectives. Oftentimes, but when students don't get diagnosed, they're going through and they're thinking that they're just bad at math when that's really not the case. They just need the math to be given to them in a way that their brain can understand it and they can thrive. I truly believe that everybody can be good at math if it's presented to them in a way that they um, accept it. I think helping children um, develop, uh, for lack of a better word, a positive mindset about it and to know that there's something that can be done about it is really really important because I think even a dyscalculic can become a brilliant statistician or engineer if they're given the right right supports along the way.